Hey beauty addicts, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, I do want to announce that we will be keeping the Beauty Addict Next Door YouTube channel name. You guys seem to really like it and uh, I kind of feel silly now for even wanting to change it because it really is who I am. And uh, even though it says beauty in it, it doesn't say lifestyle in it or refer to that. I think I don't know. I just really like it. You guys seem to really like it. I think we're all on the same page now. So Beauty Attic Next Door is what's going to stick. So moving forward, I will only have two YouTube channels, Beauty Attic Next Door and Beauty Vlogger 101. If you have no idea what I'm talking about because you're new, newer to my channel or you haven't caught up with my videos, I will link my huge announcement video down below for you guys to check out. All right, so in today's video, we are going to be going over my favorites from last year, and this is my yearly favorites, my 2016 beauty favorites is what I'm going to be going over with you guys, and I'm just going to talk about where are they now. Do I still use them? Do I still like them? Do I still believe in them? And all, all that kind of stuff, so we're just going to jump right on into it. First thing is the Jeffree Star Beauty Killer Palette. I was so obsessed with this palette in 2016 once I got it. I used it all the time. I created so many looks with this. It's going to be a little dirty. I'm not even going to lie. Especially with this black, this black kind of gets everywhere. But I was obsessed. Now, I stopped using this probably maybe a month or two ago because, and I'm gonna get into this into another video, but I'm just, I can't keep stalling how I feel about it. Uh, but I don't really, I don't think, I'm like 99% sure that I am not going to be supporting Jeffree Star Cosmetics moving forward. Uh, I'm going to continue maybe using up some of his products. I may eventually down the road sell some of the stuff that I've used on like Poshmark, but I am pretty sure at this point that I'm not going to be supporting him anymore. I didn't put Jeffree Star Cosmetics on my Christmas wish list like I thought I originally would. So, and, and the reason being is just, um, Ethics, I've been really thinking about ethics lately and who I want to support and I'll get more into that later but just ethically I don't think I can support him as a person and therefore I don't want to support his brand just for reasons that I will get into another video. So yeah, I think the palette is still great, it's amazing. I love that Jeffree Star Cosmetics is 100% vegan and cruelty free. I do think that was really sweet of him to think of his subscribers and followers and make it a vegan line so that way all of his fans can, you know, buy his products and that other people who aren't even, you know, Jeffree Star fans but are makeup enthusiasts would love to purchase from him as well. So I do appreciate that. But I will get more into all about Jeffree Star Cosmetics in a future video where I go over different brands and my feelings and thoughts about them. So, yeah. All right, so the next thing that I mentioned in that video are some ColourPop eyeshadows. So I mentioned four. I only have three at the moment right now. So we talked about, let me get the caps off of all of them. The one that I don't have right now is Bites. And that was a matte white eyeshadow. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know my thoughts about bites. But just like ColourPop discontinuing eyeshadows, it just gets really annoying. So it's like they have limited edition products, but they have, and then the non-limited edition products are almost like semi-limited edition because they're going to be discontinued in the near future. Like there's some, some places or brands that keep stuff around for a long time. And I feel like these days everything is limited edition or it's going to be discontinued and it's so much harder to as a vegan and cruelty free youtuber to find things that are not only vegan and cruelty free that aren't under a parent company that tests on animals that also are not limited edition or not going to be discontinued in the near future and you know it's really important for me as a youtuber to be able to show you guys stuff that you can still get uh but a lot of the stuff that i'm going to be showing you guys on my channel until I have more money and can go buy new things is stuff that you can't buy again. Like some stuff you can, but some stuff you can't. So I'm sorry, I want to show you that kind of stuff. Just because I have to use up what's in my collection, I can't go and get new things. But that's just kind of frustrating. But Bites, um, I really liked Bites because it was a white eyeshadow. I used it up until it dried out. It did dry out a little bit sooner than I had wished. Maybe I didn't close the cap well enough because I was using it so frequently and I was always throwing it at my purse. But it dried up, so I couldn't even finish using it up, which was kind of annoying. But I ended up getting another eyeshadow, which I talk about all the time, which I believe is still available. And that's ColourPop Tassel, which is kind of just the glitter version of it. And this one's not drying out as quickly. I think this is a lot creamier than Bites was anyway. So I'm hoping that maybe they come out with, like, Bites 2 or, like, a new matte white eyeshadow in this uh, packaging that is just like bites but better formulated and matte because I like this but sometimes I don't want the glitter in it but um I really love ColourPop eyeshadows in general 
Right now I am wearing ColourPop Koosh and I am wearing that on my lid. This is one of my favorite ColourPop eyeshadows of all time. I just think it's stunning. Like I could, you know, this look today to me isn't like super natural, but it's also not like over the top bold or glam or anything. It's just really nice and subtle, but I also have made it into a glam look. I will link my Sugar Plum Fairy makeup tutorial below where I used this. And then I also used the ColourPop Super Soft Shadow in Tinsel, which I put into the crease and on the lower lash line. It's just this beautiful purpley color. Koosh is a ultra metallic and then Tinsel is a metallic. And they both look, they were, these were meant to be together. I don't know if ColourPop specifically decides on their collections and the eyeshadow they choose that, you know, if they should go together or not. But this on the lid and then this in the crease on the lower lash line together is just absolutely stunning. So I love wearing that. I think I already wore both of these in my huge announcement video. And um, I love Koosh. I love Tinsel. Tinsel is one of the most beautiful shades from ColourPop. But the thing is, it's not something that you can wear on a daily basis. You have to be more careful with what you pair it with because it has that purpley tint to it. But um, I still absolutely love it. And then Wilshire, I actually had a, I couldn't find and then I realized it was in my purse because Wilshire is just a great crease color. Uh, I always put it on the crease and the lower lash line. It's a great on the go color. So whenever I was living in Pittsburgh, you know, I would take the bus, I would be in a lift, someone would be driving me to work or I would be on the train. I, I you know, and I'm always, I was always doing my makeup on the go. So that's why I've, I've been so obsessed with these ColourPop shadows that come in this packaging because they are so great for on the go and they don't take up a lot of space in your makeup bag. It's not like you have to take a whole entire palette and then worry that it's gonna spill over your purse. So Wilshire's great. I don't think you can get Wilshire anymore because I think it was from like the K-pop collection or I'm not sure. It is a matte finish, but to me really the important part is that you guys should try out ColourPop matte eyeshadows that are in this like kind of medium brown tone because they look really good in the crease and it's a great day to day color you can also use it for more you know glammed up looks it kind of it's a little bit more versatile but I love it more for natural I think that's kind of like one of my favorite products from ColourPop is like the more natural makeup that comes like this that I can easily take on the go so I really really like that a lot so overall in general I just I'm going to be putting back these so don't mind me if I'm looking up. But overall in general, I just really love ColourPop eyeshadows and just their products in general. I think that they're amazing. Uh, like I said, my only beef with them is that products just keep getting discontinued. It, it kind of makes me hesitate to buy stuff from them because I'm like, I'm going to spend this money. And granted, it's not a lot of money, so that's good. But it's just going to it's just gonna be discontinued. So I guess I want to buy from ColourPop, but sometimes I'm like, do I want to buy a lot? I guess I could get away with getting the brow pencils or the brow gel or something that's like super staple-y, but like eyeshadows and lipsticks, like they're always coming out with new shades. So it's like, I, when new shades come out, I wouldn't go crazy and stock up on a bunch of them if you are a YouTuber. If you're not a YouTuber, then do whatever the heck you want. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But if you are a YouTuber, then I wouldn't go crazy with it, but. Yeah, so sometimes I'm going to talk about this, guys, whether my opinion as far as non-YouTuber versus being a YouTuber, I do that a lot in my would I buy it because I know most of you are not YouTubers, but some of you are YouTubers, and that will affect your decision on whether to buy something or not. So just kind of keep that in mind. That's why I'm doing that to help both someone who is a YouTuber and also people who are not YouTubers. All right, the next product that we're going to talk about is the e.l.f. Matte for Matte Palette. I'm wearing this on my eyes today. I'm wearing this shade right here in the crease and on the lower lash line. I have been so obsessed with this palette this year, particularly the end of this year, and definitely ever since I moved um, in with my parents, I have absolutely loved this palette because I've been going for more natural looks lately, but it also pairs well with uh, other looks too. You don't have to just use it for natural looks. You can also pair it with other products to make a more you know full face makeup tutorial, full face makeup look, um, especially because you get these gray colors, this would probably be good. I actually should test these out to do more cool, cool tone looks, but I typically gravitate towards this end to do more natural looks. And I just think it's a great starter palette. It's a staple palette of mine. Uh, you know, something that's good for people who are new to makeup, people who are making the vegan cruelty free transition. You know, the eyeshadows work great. Not saying that they're the highest quality eyeshadows that I've ever used, but they work just fine. It comes with a mirror and it is thin and sleek. So it's not, if you had to take it on the go or if you had to travel with it, it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. And I think I have used my fingers sometimes with this in case I just didn't want to bring uh, a brush with me. I think the ColourPop eyeshadows are better for on the go and using your fingers than this, but it still can work. But yeah, but I typically gravitate more towards this end 
of the spectrum and do more natural looks with this palette, but I really still love it a lot. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's still really, it's actually going to be in my 2017 Beauty Favorites spoiler alert. So, um, you know, that really shows that it is a great product because it was in last year's favorites. It's going to be again in this yearly favorites and I would highly recommend it. And it's really not that expensive either. So, and e.l.f. is my definitely my favorite drugstore brand at the moment. Now, last year I mentioned the Wet n Wild Max Volume Mascara, and I no longer have that because I used up whatever last one that I had, and I'm pretty sure I used it more at the beginning of 2017, but once I ran out of it, I didn't repurchase it. I think I ran out of it a couple of months ago because once I ran out of it, I ended up getting the Wet n Wild Max Fanatic Mascara, which I have also been loving. I can't tell if I like it better than the other one just because I haven't used the Max Volume in a long time, so I do plan on repurchasing the max volume and then kind of doing a comparison but I think no matter what even if I like this a little bit better or I like the max volume a little bit better I like to mix it up so I think what I'll do is I'll just keep repurchasing both of these because I think wet and wild mascaras are amazing I really like them a ton there's definitely ones that I like more than others but I would really recommend the max volume and also the max fanatic it's definitely a great mascara so like I said I'm definitely going to be repurchasing it down the road it's just still working on this guy then the next product is the Wet n Wild Mega Liner Liquid Eyeliner. I'm actually surprised that this was on here for some reason. I thought I got, got this at the beginning of 2017 or something, but maybe I just repurchased it. But I love this eyeliner. It is so good, guys. I've tried so many eyeliners from the drugstore. Like, I think two were e.l.f., two were Wet n Wild. And, you know, I've tried other liquid eyeliners before, but they may no longer be cruelty-free or vegan. So... But this has still worked really great for me. The formula is good. The uh, applicator is good. Like the brush works really well. You know, it doesn't transfer. So out of all the liquid eyeliners, this is the one that I've had the most success with hitting all of those points. So this is also going to be making my 2017 favorites video. So uh, because it's just still that amazing, it's definitely if I have to pick an eyeliner, I want to go with this one. Next products I mentioned last year were the ColourPop Brow Pencils in Dope Taupe and Blondie. I definitely used Blondie a lot. I think I probably used Dope Taupe the first couple months of 2017. And then once my hair got a little bit lighter, I was like, nope, not anymore. Then I switched over to Blondie. Or maybe that was at the end of 2016. I don't know. But at a certain point, my hair was just too blonde for me to be using Dope Taupe. So I switched over to Blondie. And I love that so, so much. So I... The good chunk of 2017, I was loving Blondie. I actually did a ColourPop purchase where I only purchased brow pencils and I just purchased six of them so I could get the free shipping. And I used up all of them and a couple of months ago. And luckily I just used the last bit of it right before I changed my hair color. So now that my hair color is darker, I was like, okay, well now I can go back to Dope Taupe. I don't have to put in another order for more brow pencils because I still have some Dope Taupe left. So I started using Dope Taupe and I'm like, this is way warmer than I remembered. So I don't, I like, I want something darker than Blondie, but I don't want it to be warm and reddish like Dope Taupe. I didn't realize the warmth of it until like I was playing with it more and I was taking photos and I was like, I just don't like how that looks. So I'm no longer using either because Blondie now is too light. And actually I should try, I kind of want to try Blondie though, even with this hair color and see if it still works. But Dope Taupe definitely, like I did not like that red tone. And uh, right now I'm using the e.l.f. brow pencil in taupe, which works great. So that's kind of what I've been doing lately. Uh, but the ColourPop brow pencils are amazing quality. I really like them a lot. It's just, you have to make sure you find the right color. So if you find the right shade for you, I would go for it. But if you can't, if you don't have one that fits you, then obviously it's not worth it. If it's just gonna be like a weird color that doesn't match your skin tone or your hair. So kind of keep that in mind. The quality of the product is good, the brush is good, all that jazz. So, and then the other product that I mentioned next was the e.l.f. Clear Brow Gel. And it's also like a clear brow gel and mascara. And I used, I didn't use it the mascara, but I never really touched it, but I used up the brow gel part of it. And it was so, I think I mentioned it in my last empties. But it was such a great product. It isn't as good as what I'm using right now, which is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. But it is like 10 times cheaper. I think that the e.l.f. one is like two bucks and maybe even a dollar. And the, the Anastasia one is like $18. So the Anastasia one I definitely prefer. But if you're trying to save money and you don't want to splurge because brow gel, if you use it on a daily basis, 
you're gonna go through it really quickly or even every other day you're gonna go through it quickly brow brow products are one of those products that you go through quickly so you got to be like do I really want to spend you know $21 on a brow with or $18 on a clear brow gel I think that's kind of a product where you want to get more drugstore products that are more affordable and then maybe on special occasions you can use like the brow whiz and the clear brow gel from anastasia so it just kind of depends but the elf one worked out really great so i didn't repurchase it because i'm still working on the anastasia one and it's not something i absolutely need right now in my current situation but whenever i you know have money to go and spend on beauty products i definitely will be purchasing repurchasing the elf clear brow gel because i think it's amazing the next product is the pixie by petra makeup fixing mist i no longer have it because i finally used it up a couple of months ago and it is such an amazing product i do want to repurchase it but i can't at the moment i have to wait till i get a job again because it is a more expensive product and it's also a product that isn't necessary. If I do any repurchasing, uh, it's going to be if I run out of foundation, if I run out of concealer, like kind of the more essentials. Uh, but clear brow gel is not essential. A setting spray is not essential to do your makeup. So, and I have, I have two setting sprays that's going to last me at least a year. So I, I feel like I'm going to be okay. But whenever, you know, I have that money to splurge, I am totally going to get that Pixie by Petra makeup fixing mess again. That is a holy grail beauty product of mine. I I absolutely love it. I cannot tell if it makes your makeup last longer, but it just smells so good. It's so refreshing. I just feel like my makeup look, looks amazing after using it. I mainly get it though for the refreshing part. I love the smell and it just feels so nice on the skin. And it's a product too that I use whether I was wearing makeup or not wearing makeup. I put it on before my makeup, after I'm done my makeup. I wear it on days where I'm not wear, wearing makeup just to freshen up my skin. And I just, I love that product. If I could, re like, that's one of the main products I would recommend to you guys is that. I think it's completely worth the splurge. I do want to try the other one. I think, I think there's two other ones. One of them I don't think is vegan. And one of them I know for, sh for sure is. I think it's the milky one is vegan. I have to double check that. It's one or the other. But I do want to try another one just to kind of switch it up and see. But I think even though I want to try another one, I think I still will repurchase the, the, uh, Pixie by Petra Makeup Fixing Mist that has that rose scent to it. I'm still going to get that one first because it's so good. I miss it badly, actually. <laughs> the next thing that I talked about last year was the e.l.f. Mineral Infused Face Primer. That is my favorite face primer of all time. I discovered it because I was trying to find a dupe for the Smashbox, I think, photo finish primer or something like that. Uh, it's really expensive, I think, to get the biggest size. It's like 50 bucks or something. And even if you get a small sample size, it's still like 30 bucks. It's kind of ridiculous. I think I was on Pinterest and I saw that the Elf Mineral Infused Face Primer was a dupe for that. And the good thing too is that, you know, Smashbox isn't cruelty-free and vegan. Like, I don't think it's a cruelty-free and vegan product, but Elf is. So, and it's 10 times more affordable. And I checked it out and I I became obsessed. I think I've almost repurchased it 10 times at this point, and I would have repurchased it even more than 10 times had I not tried to branch out and try other primers or like try other primers specifically from e.l.f., but I absolutely love that one. That is definitely my favorite primer of all time, favorite e.l.f. primer for sure. But right now I am still working on using up another one from e.l.f., which is the Poreless Face Primer. It comes in the pink tube. This is my second favorite one. Both are, you know, a little bit different from the other. The other one, the Mineral Infused Clear one, that one is a little bit more slick and slippery and slidey. This one is still a little bit slick, but it has more of a cushion to it. You know, it's kind of like a cross between a lotion and a gel, but still more on the gel side. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it's just amazing. So both are great. So it's kind of a preference. This one does smell a little weird. The Mineral Infused one is just plain, like it's just, it is, but... I recommend both to you guys. I, I have had so much success with all primers and I definitely will be repurchasing the mineral infused one whenever I run out of this one. Then I have the e.l.f. Acne Fighting Foundation. This is my favorite foundation I think of all time because it does a great balance between you know, being dewy and being matte. Like it's not too matte. It's not too dewy. It's not too thick. It's thick enough that it covers up things you want to hide, but it's not so thick that it feels heavy on your skin and it gets super cakey and whatnot. It's what I'm wearing today. I really do love this foundation. Uh, I did pick up some foundation because I knew I was going to be running out of this soon. I thought about repurchasing this, but I wanted to try something new. And I tried the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation, but I'm not really happy with it. So whenever this runs out, I'm going to be really sad because <laughs> I really want this again. But definitely whenever I have the money, I will be repurchasing this one. Or whenever I run out of foundation, then I'll get this. 
but it is an amazing, amazing product. I don't know if it helps with acne. I don't think it does because I've been having breaking out so bad lately. I'm not sure exactly why, but um, before I never had acne problems and I used it for a really long time and pretty much it just made my skin look amazing, feel amazing. So I would really recommend this product for sure. And I know a lot of other YouTubers have really been loving it as well. So definitely check this out. And if you guys are curious, I'm wearing, this is in porcelain. Oh, and I think this is the same too from last year. So maybe that's why it's bothering me because I've just been slow. I've been testing out other like foundations. So maybe because it's been a year, maybe that's why. I'm one of those people who doesn't follow the rules about how long you should keep makeup. I'm kind of like until it looks gross or it's been like a decade, it's fine. It's fine. The next product that I mentioned last year is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. Definitely a staple blush, I think, in the YouTube community and just myself, my favorite brush blush of all time. I just think it's absolutely amazing. Just the, the formula is great, the color is great. It has a little shimmer, but it's not like you look at your you look at your cheek and you're like, oh my god, there's sparkles everywhere. It just looks it's, it's like a nice glow and I think it works year round because I think in the summer you kind of get that burnt feeling and then in the winter you kind of get like oh she must be cold kind of feeling from the look and I just think that it's just a great product I highly recommend this Milani blush but if you guys have any other blushes that you really love let me know down in the comments because I definitely want to expand my blush collection I'm just not sure what I should get next the next thing I want to talk about with you guys is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. So I am still enjoying it this year. But the main reason why I'm enjoying it so much is this shade right here, which I have hit pan. I'm kind of curious how much pan if I had hit pan last year, but I'm I'm getting close to being out of it, which is really sad. This one is just too shimmery for me to use underneath my eyes. So if I'm going for a more natural look, but I still want to highlight. I put this on my cheekbone just to kind of give that nice glow. This I didn't really touch a lot just because it's really dark. I've been told you can use it as a bronzer, but I don't like to bronze or contour or anything. So this one is just kind of not being used. This is sometimes being used and this one is being used a lot. So pretty much whenever I have the money, because Hourglass is a more expensive brand, I will be repurchasing this product right here because I just think, was this dim light? I think this is dim light. Yeah, so it's just it's such a sunny state. And the formula, I just, I think out of all the powders that I've tried, I think Hourglass Ambient, the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders are the best. There's just something about them that's just, it's like your skin, but better. It's like not too powdery. It shows up. It makes your skin look good. Like, I don't know. I just really like it. The only thing with palettes is, you know, everyone's been getting really into all these contour palettes and blush palettes and eyeshadow, well, eyeshadow palettes are fine highlighting palettes but the thing is when it comes to, to skin tone getting palettes can be really annoying because you get maybe one or two shades or you get a couple and then that are your shade that you can work with but then there's all these other shades that you're not using that are just sitting there being wasted and that's really frustrating but uh so for me I guess I wouldn't suggest getting this palette what I would suggest is definitely just going to the store testing out um these powders and just getting whatever one fits you best and just do that. So I definitely recommend the powders themselves, getting them in the single form, but maybe not the palette here because, you know, someone who could use this won't be able to use that. And you know what I'm saying? Like if you get palettes like these, you, you can't, and you usually don't end up using every single shade. I definitely can make all these shades work, but truthfully, this is the only shade that I'm really going for. This I go for just for the sake of it, just to make sure that I'm still using up this product. But if it disappeared, I wouldn't cry. This, if it disappeared, I'd be like super upset. So, you know, whatever. All right, the next product I absolutely love, but is no longer available, but they need to make it available. And it is the ColourPop Highlighter in Fanny Pack. Out of And, and, and I'm just talking about in this packaging, not like their new flat ones. But I cannot, I don't think I've been able to find a ColourPop white highlighter that is just straight up white. I feel like I've looked at other ones and there's like a pink reflect or a gold reflect or a blue reflect embedded into it. But this one I feel like is the truest white highlighter. When I first got it, I told everybody like if you have fair skin like me or even more fair, you need to get this highlighter. I think it's amazing. It's definitely one of my favorite highlighters of all time. The only thing is I haven't really been using it as much because I can't show it on my channel and I don't want to be wearing it on Snapchat and have people be like, what are you wearing? 
At this point though, it just feels like all of my products are being discontinued or a limited edition at this point. I don't really care. So I'm gonna try to use up what I have, especially because I don't want things to go to waste and get old and then I just have to throw it away. So I'm trying to you know, do a better job of using up my products, even if they are no longer available. But if this ever comes out, which it better, if there was like, let's say 10 products that I would want ColourPop to bring back, this would definitely make the top 10, top five products that I would ask ColourPop to bring back just because it's just the most beautiful, beautiful shade. I don't wanna show you like swatches of everything because I feel like I'll be here forever. But like, it's just so beautiful. And I'm wearing it on my cheekbone today too. So you can really see it in action. I put it on my nose, my Cupid's bow. But like, look how stunning that is. I just, I can't get over it. So I have been loving it this year but I just haven't been using it as much as I would have if I wasn't a YouTuber. If I wasn't a YouTuber, I'd, wear, I'd just probably be like hidden pan, but because I'm a YouTuber, I didn't use it as much, so. All right, the next products I'm gonna talk about with you are the glow kits from Anastasia Beverly Hills. So we have this one, I'm just gonna show you real quick. This one in Gleam, which is more of like the pinky highlighter set. And then this one, which is the more kind of bronzy, yellow gold set, so. Those obviously had to make my 2016 favorites, which is mu as much as I talked about it. One of my first videos in the year of 2016 was me doing a review of those palettes where I compared them. It's one of my most popular videos on this channel. I think it's in the top three videos. And I, you know, I was so proud of that video. The only problem is I don't think that these are available anymore. And I haven't been, I think I used them maybe more in the beginning of 2017 but definitely have not been lately because I realized that they were discontinued and it's harder to take product shots when they're so big. So if I'm using a big palette, I don't wanna use another big palette because it makes it harder for me to take my Instagram photo. So, um, and then I also just, I don't know, I like highlighters in the single form. I'm not really, right at the moment, a big palette fan. So I'm still gonna be using those. I'm gonna try to use those up. I'm probably never gonna be able to use those up. Maybe one day I might even sell them just because I can't really show you guys anymore. Like maybe once I get a couple more highlighters, maybe I'll sell those just because they've been discontinued. But they are still great quality. They're beautiful. Um, I really like them a lot. You can use them both as highlighters, but also as eyeshadows. So I think they're really versatile and it's nice having that selection. And even the, the products that are too, a little bit too dark for me, I use as like a crease shade in my, on my eye and you know, lighter shades, even if I'm doing other looks and I just wanna put a little highlighter on the inner corner, I do that. So um, definitely near the end of 2017, like the second half of 2017, I really haven't been touching them. I may have at the beginning of 2017. But I'm just not as big of a fan now, especially when things are just continue. It's just like, oh, here we go. But um, if you guys could repurchase this, I would definitely recommend maybe try checking out the newer Anastasia Glow palettes. I definitely, you know, I don't know how they compare to the old one. I would definitely look up a video to see if the quality, you know, kind of stayed the same. I feel like, I feel like they have. My only problem is I've heard that they break all the time, so... <laughs> I don't know, like they come in the mail broken. So I don't know how I feel about those. What I wish is that the Anastasia would come out with the, and I just realized this recently that this was discontinued with the Illuminator and Starlight. I think there's still a couple of veil Illuminators available. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's just on one side they're sold out maybe, but those need to come back. I loved having those in the single form they had on Mirror, which the palettes that I just mentioned, the glow kits, they don't have a mirror. So, I don't know, but yeah, I definitely think I'm more of a single highlighter kind of girl. The next thing I want to talk about, which I have talked about way too much, is the e.l.f. Makeup Remover Cleansing Cloths. I swear by these. I think these are amazing. They do a really good job of getting your makeup off your arms, off your face, and they also don't burn your face, tug at your face, and you know, because I feel like other makeup wipes, I have to scrub so much harder to get my makeup off, and then my skin gets really irritated and red and it's just not comfortable and it takes 10 times longer to get off. But these are so hydrating. They're so full of like what whatever water or product is. They're so wet that you really get a lot off of your face without the torture. So I definitely recommend these. These are also really affordable. I think they're the most affordable at Target. I think they're like $2.99 plus if you have a Target card, you can get 5% off. So I always get these at Target. I think at CVS, I had to get a pack of these for $4.99. So definitely I would recommend getting them from Target. I'm not sure how they are on the e.l.f. website, but definitely like with something like this, 
check online to see what the different prices are, but I feel like Target's probably the best way to go, especially because you can go pick it up at Target. You don't have to order it online, or if you do order it online, you have the Target card, you get free shipping. Like, there's so many benefits. But this, I probably have gotten 10 of these so far. I may have gotten more. I definitely probably, if I'm not in the double digits, then I'm about to be because I just ordered two more of these from Target. The next product I'm going to talk about is a Glamour Dolls lipstick, which is a 100% vegan brand, and their products are extremely affordable. I think these lipsticks are $2.99 a piece, and Dump Him is definitely my favorite lipstick from them and probably my favorite matte lipstick that I own. And when I say matte lipstick, I mean non-liquid lipstick. Liquid lipsticks are my favorite ever. I... It's really hard. It's really hard for me to wear regular lipstick after switching over to liquid lipsticks because I hate having to retouch my lipstick and I hate having it getting all over the place and then coming off and it's just like really annoying. But this color is just so cute. It's like a bubblegum pink. I can't I can't remember how much I've used it this year. Definitely the second half I haven't really touched it at all. I did use it in uh, my upcoming pink snow, like my upcoming pink makeup tutorial that I'm doing for you guys, but I think that's what I'm calling it. I don't know. But uh, so it's kind of like if I need this color, especially when I'm trying to create a specific look, I'll go for it. But I'm just so obsessed with like lipsticks. I'm really not into just regular lipsticks. Like part of me wants to just to switch it up and show you guys different products. And I really want to support Glamour Dolls more. But like I just love my liquid lipsticks so much but if you do like regular lipsticks I highly recommend Glamour Dolls. They have some other really cute shades too but this Dump Him shade is just so beautiful. Let me pull it here so you can kind of like see against my skin. So pretty. And I do have a lip swatch video from the five I think five Glamour Dolls lipsticks that I own so I will have that link down below so you guys can check out. So uh, this won't be making my 2017 favorites but it's not because it's bad quality it's just because I'm a lipstick whore. <laughs> a, li a liquid lipstick lover and I can't love this at the same time. Speaking of liquid lipsticks, I have the ColourPop liquid lipsticks in Alyssa and Clueless. Yeah, that was right. The Clueless one is the Ultra Matte and Alyssa is the Ultra Satin. I am wearing Alyssa right now. In 2016, oh my gosh, I was so obsessed with Clueless. I think I wore it like pretty much every time I did my lipstick. I just absolutely loved it. Uh, and I did love Alyssa a lot too. Obviously, it made my 2016 favorites. But of the two, like really Clueless, I haven't really touched that much this year, especially like the end of this year. I can't remember the very beginning, but I really don't think I gravitated towards this much. I gravitated more towards this shade, especially because I've been going for more natural looks. And I feel like Clueless is just, there's something about it that's just a tad too dark or mauvey that if I'm doing something super natural it just looks makes my lips look a little too dark and too it sticks it sticks out too much my lips stick out too much it doesn't blend well into my makeup I just it's like I have a face and lips so when I'm going for a more natural look I want something a little bit more natural looking I definitely think Alyssa goes a little bit better for that now if I have eyeliner on I have more of a full face makeup look I go for clueless but I've just been gravitating so more so much to Alyssa and then midi so that's kind of typically what I go for. Clueless is still a great shade. If you still get it, I would still recommend getting it. But if you need a good everyday shade, the, Alyssa is amazing. And, you know, if you really prefer the ultra satins over the ultra mattes, you know, this is an ultra satin. If you prefer the ultra mattes, I would definitely suggest midi. But overall, um, last year I did say that just ColourPop liquid lipsticks in general were my favorite. And that is still the case. I absolutely love ColourPop liquid lipsticks. I... That's pretty much all I wear, like 90% of the time, 95, 99% of the time. You guys see me filming a video, you see me on Snapchat wearing lipstick, I'm wearing a ColourPop liquid lipstick, whether it's an ultra satin, an ultra matte, maybe I tried an ultra gloss. Like, I just really love their lip products. I have been testing the ones from e.l.f. out a little bit, but I really i am not gravitating towards them. Especially because some of them were streaky. And then I just kind of forget about the other ones, or the other ones, like, I'm like, okay, I have to wear it with a specific, the ones that I did like, I'm like, I have to wear it with a specific look. And then the one shade that's really good for every day, I just kind of forget about because I'm not thinking about any of the other ones. So I really want to try that Marvelous one. I think I need to try that one out more. But I've just been kind of going to my go-tos lately, which is the ColourPop Ultra Satin and Alyssa and Ultra Matte and Midi. 
Then last year I mentioned my Bi Allegory Lip Gloss Holder, which I just put all of my liquid lipsticks in, and I still absolutely love these, still use these. I love that I got a clear version because then all of the lipstick shades can pop through. If you're getting organizer, I, I would highly recommend getting clear, especially if it's going to be part of a display piece. If it's going to be in a drawer, it's really not a big deal, but if you're going to have it as a display, you want the colorful products to peer through, so I'd recommend getting the clear one. But by Allegory, they just have really great products for organizing organizing and I think that they're high quality like I thought when I first got them that they would come in and be like really thin and like I'm, I'm like waiting for them to break but they're very thick acrylic so that makes it me feel a lot more comfortable they haven't broken on me yet I haven't seen any chips yet like they're really functional really great for organization so I highly recommend those and whenever I got them I got them off of Amazon I believe so check them out there then the next products that I mentioned I have them both here I'm gonna awkwardly pull things up is the Sigma Spa Brush Cleaning Mat and then the Sigma Dry and Shape Tower Face and Eyes holds up to 24 eye brushes and 20 base brushes thin. I don't think it holds as much at one time and typically what I do is I put, put the stand up like this and I do like face brushes here and eye brushes here but the thing is when you put brushes up here it ends up hitting brushes down here so it's like whatever but overall i really love those products it has changed my brush cleaning game i do need to do like a brush cleaning video for you guys but i need to get like a cruelty free and vegan brush cleaner or like brush soap or something i have not got that i've been wanting to try the sigma one but i just can't get it at the moment so down the road i definitely want to get the sigma one because i've heard good things about it and i think i'm 99 percent sure someone said it was vegan so I really want to test that out and I'll do a video down the road. Maybe I'll do it sooner and just not show you what soap I'm using and just say go find this one or something. I don't know. But I really like the mat. I think the mat is great. I wouldn't get the glove. I know people probably have recommended the glove. The thing is as you're washing it, you have to like set the brush down and like, you know, the water could run, the soap could run down your arm. And if you're not careful, if you want to like move stuff over, you have to be careful where you're dripping. Like I feel like that's just more of a pain in the butt. The mat just sits in your sink and it has like little suction cups at the bottom. So you can just place it down and then you can clean. So I have still been loving using those products. I definitely think it helps to have your brushes dry upside down. So that's why I really like that tower. Uh, so it's really helped me with brush cleaning. Not that I have brush, <laughs> wash my brushes in the past three months, but I will get to it. I have a lot of brushes, so I've been able to kind of get away with it, but I really need to get to cleaning them. So I just always forget. So maybe I'll just like leave this sitting out and then that will help remind me because I don't think about cleaning my brushes until I'm about to use brushes, but then I don't have the time at that moment to clean brushes because I'm like, I'm about to film and then I can just completely forget about it later. So gotta find some way to remind myself but I really recommend those I kind of wish though with the the tower that I got the bigger one that is the only thing I would change all right now we're going to get into the brushes portion of this and I'm going to mention two the first two brushes I talked about last year were the Sigma E25 and the Sigma F F35 so the Sigma E25 is the blending brush for your eyes and then the Sigma F35 is the taper highlighting brush so this brush I like to use on the outer corners of my eyes and this brush I love to use to set my under eye concealer and also as a highlighter shade. These two are still my favorite brush, some of my favorite brushes from Sigma for, for sure and just in general. E25 is a holy grail eye brush of mine because it's the only brush that I have that does a really good job of doing the eyeshadow in the outer corner so I literally don't know what I would do without this brush. If anything I definitely need to get more backups of this brush since I like to use it a lot. And maybe keep one that's meant for the black and one for like brown and stuff, you know, too. Because I'm not the best at cleaning my brushes. So I still really like these a lot. So I would highly recommend checking out Sigma and these specific brushes because I've used them a ton. So not even just this year or last year. Ever since I bought them, I've used them so much. Then I mentioned two brushes from e.l.f. Cosmetics, which is the small stipple brush and the blending brush. Both awesome brushes, however, because I wasn't contouring as much in 2017, really at all, um, I haven't really used that this brush at all that much. However, I did just use it yesterday, so that's why it's dirty. I do have a backup of this one too because I loved it so much because it's really great for blending out your contour. Typically when I blend out my blush, I use um, not a small stipple brush, but just like a regular size bigger stippling brush. But whenever I do contouring, I like to swirl this around and it's still a really great brush for that and it's affordable and I would highly recommend it. 
and I loved it so much that I did get backups but in 2017 I really don't think I used this really at all like maybe a couple a handful of times but really not enough to, for me to be able to be like this is a 2017 you know favorite of mine uh, but the blending brush definitely I think will make my 2017 favorites because it is one of my few tapered eyeshadow brushes I think I only have one other one I think it's from SL Miss Glam Beauty but this is um, you know, one that's more affordable. You can buy it just a single form. You can pick it up at the drugstore. Uh, so I would highly recommend getting this one. And so many people have recommended this one to me. And I love the fact that it's tapered. So whenever I want to do what I call those layered looks, when I want to get into the deep crease, this is a good brush for that. I still do prefer the Essel Miss Glam Beauty just a slight bit more because it's a little bit flaffer, flaffer, flatter and less fluffy. <laughs> I should make that a word. That could be my word, flapper. So it's a lot less flapper than the SL Miss Glam Beauty one. Um, but it still works really great. It's good for blending out the crease color. If anything, if you're doing more of a light layered look where you're not, the, the deep crease color isn't super dark. Like yesterday, I used the SL Miss Glam one and because I was putting black on the deep crease, I feel like black with this one would spread up too much. But I think if you were doing like, you know, a medium brown, this would be fine because it won't be, it's, it won't be too dark of a shade that it could get out of hand. So you also gotta kind of think about that when you're doing your makeup and what brushes to pick is like, okay, how dark is this shade and will this brush be able to handle that darkness? You know, because it can, this slight thickness difference can make all the difference in the world depending on what color eyeshadow that you're using. But overall, this was great to use as in the deep crease to, to do in the blow out, blown out crease. It's really affordable, I really like it and really I recommend both of these brushes. But I didn't really use this brush that much because I wasn't contouring. And this brush I've used a lot. Alright, next we're going to talk about SL Miss Glam Beauty brushes. So I talked about these brushes with you guys last year. And the first one I... Well, actually I'm not entirely sure about the order. But the one I want to talk about next is the W18 brush from the White Glam Brush Book. All these are from the White Glam Brush Book except for the one blue macaroon one. But that one you can also get in the White Glam Brush Book just with the white handle. And so this is the Fluffy Crease W18 brush. This is the brush that I was referring to whenever I was talking about the e.l.f. blending brush. This is the one that's a little bit flatter. And if you're going to use a darker shade, definitely going with this one. This is kind of my, my go-to uh, go brush for the deep crease. And then if this one's dirty, I'll use the e.l.f. one. Just because this one's flatter, but this is definitely still one of my favorite brushes of all time. I really, really love this brush from SL Miss Glam Beauty. Another brush is the Fluffy Deluxe W22 brush. This one's not as big of a favorite of mine anymore just because there's a ton of fluffy brushes that I own. I have one from Sigma. I have one from Wet n Wild. So this one isn't as special to me as the W22. Like, the W22 is the only one, like the one that I have, and e.l.f. is the closest one, but still this one performs a little bit better. But I have a ton of fluffy brushes, so this one isn't as, as amazing to me, but um, I still really like it. And then I talked about the Stippling Face W09 brush. I really love the Stippling brush a lot. I use it to blend out my blush, but I also have one from Wet n Wild that I really like. I'm not sure which one I prefer, but it's not different enough that it'd be worth spending extra money to get this. I would still go for the Wet n Wild one. Then we have the Macaroon M05 Taper Highlight Brush. This Taper Highlight Brush is in other sets, so you can get it with different handles and different sets and whatnot. Um, what's special about this one in particular is the blue handle and the blue rhinestone right here. I just think this is definitely one of my favorite brushes of all time whatever handle it's in, but definitely specifically this handle is really fun because it's the Mac part of the macaroon set. But this one is so great for getting right underneath of your eye to set your under eye concealer. It's also tapered enough that it's good to use as a highlighter um, to highlight your cheekbone with. And it's just a great brush. Definitely one of my favorite brushes of all time. One of my favorite brushes from Essel Miss Glam Beauty. I really recommend getting this brush. And the good thing is I think this is one of the brushes that's more populated in the brush sets. So I would recommend this one for sure. Then the last one that I talked about was the Fan Highlight W30. I did compare it to the Ms. Liz Hart L04, I believe, which is a little bit smaller, but I still prefer this one over that one. Just for some reason, I love how big and fluffy this is. I don't know if this will make my 2017 favorites. This one I kind of have to think about. It probably won't just because I... I've been using my fingers a lot for putting on highlighter, but I kind of, part of the problem is I don't remember everything from the beginning of 2017, so I kind of want to like, kind of look, go look back in time and kind of look over everything just so I'm memorizing everything, right? Because it's my yearly favorites, not my half, second half of the year favorites. So, uh, yeah, but I really love this brush. And I did talk about in general last year 
how I felt about the SMS Glam Beauty brushes, and I still, I mean, I don't remember exactly what I said last year, but I, you know, I believe, still believe that they are the very high quality brushes, really soft, really beautiful. Just overall, they hit all the good points other than cost. So, I mean, if you are trying to get high quality brushes, this is great. If you're trying to get pretty brushes, this is great. Brushes that, honestly, at this point, like, I would even buy just specifically to put on display. Not even for use. Like, I would get, I would want to buy double of everything just so I have a set to use and a set to display. Like, they're just absolutely stunning brushes. So I'd really recommend checking these out if you ever want to splurge on anything. You know, you can get the brush books, you can get some of the brush sets. I'm praying that at some point that individual brushes do come out. And can you imagine if the individual brushes come out and then you could select what handle you got? I mean, that would be so awesome. <laughs> that would be a lot of work. So I know Stephanie is still like, um, I don't know if you guys know, but Ezel Miss Glam Beauty, she is a YouTuber. Her YouTube channel is Ezel Miss Glam. And she started her own makeup brush line, and then she also sells other products, but the biggest thing that she sells are her brushes. So, she, you know, she's still dipping her toes into everything, and whenever you start a business, you kind of have to start somewhere and then improve as you go. So, I'm totally fine with her taking her time to getting two single brushes, but I hope that that is a goal someday, because there's some brushes that are just so amazing that I would love specifically just to get as backups, but I don't want to have to buy a whole other set. I don't want to have to get a set of 50 just to get that one brush. I mean, there's granted, there's some other brushes that'd be nice to have backups of too, but I think it'd be fun to do that. And that way other people can try it too without having to buy the whole set and they can really determine whether or not they want to buy from SL Miss Glam, which I think that you would. So, um, yeah, so I really recommend these. They're just such amazing products. Um, I do also really love Sigma brushes. There's some good drugstore um, brushes, but these are definitely the most pretty ones. And I think the most soft ones too. The next things I talked about in my 2016 favorites video are these nail polishes from Isla Cosmetics. These are, are amazing. I haven't really used House of Pink that much just because it's a black. Typically, um, I think in 2017, a good chunk of the year, I was getting my nails done. And then I was also going for more like neutral colors. So I namaste, I'm probably going to use up pretty soon. It's probably going to be the next nail polish that I use up just because it's a very neutral shade. You can wear it with anything. It's what you can wear it to work. You can wear it to the club. Like it's the most versatile shade. And out of all of the nail polishes that I've tried from Isla, this one's the best formulated. I don't think that the it's really consistent between colors. I think there is a little bit of differences, which I'm not going to get on Isla for because this is kind of the same thing with like liquid lipsticks or with anything. D different color changes means you have to use um, a little bit different formula to get to that color. So sometimes that, you know, difference in color does affect the difference in how it's played. Not saying that, you know, the other ones are bad quality. This one for me is just the easiest one to use. And I think the one that I don't have to use as many layers of, it's, it's not like this one's, the black one is, you know, darker. So you would think, okay, I wouldn't, I would need less coats, but this one can also get a little bit goopy. I noticed with blacks, I feel like they're a little bit more goopy. But this one definitely is my favorite nail polish, and this will probably still make my 2017 favorites. Um, actually, I don't know. It may. Just because once I started doing, getting my nails done, I stopped, and then I just, I've been so bad about doing my nails. That's why I love getting my nails done, because I'm so sick of chipping. But the thing is, I definitely think that these will make my 2017 favorites are the better than gel and the primer. So I put this on before I put my nail polish on and then I put this on after. And these help make my nail polish last longer. Not long, but longer. So instead of, you know, it chipping the next day or in the next couple of hours, it chips like a couple days later and it'll only be like a tiny chip on like one nail that's like a dominant nail. And then, you know, it starts getting really bad after a week or something. So, uh, I definitely think that these have helped, you know, prolong my nail polish wear. Maybe the nail polishes themselves from Isla Cosmetics also are really good and also help provide longevity. I have used these with Dimension Nails uh, nail polish, which I definitely need to, I need to test out the other two shades. I've only tested out the nude one, but I need to test out the other ones as well. But these definitely help made those um, ones last longer. I just hate doing my nails though, guys. I hate it because I'm always busy. I'm always running around trying to do stuff and to just sit and wait for my nails to dry is so annoying. And when you're going in with all of these layers, that means you have to wait a good amount of time for one layer to dry to put on the next layer because otherwise it's like you're having all these layers. And sometimes if I do it too soon, 
and then my nail hit something on accident, then I have like a shriveled up nail because I ended up touching something too quickly or like indenting it with a texture or something and it gets so annoying. So that's why I cannot wait till I have money so I can get my nails done because I'm just not gonna do that. I'll probably, what I'll do though, I'll still use my nail polishes but I won't put them on my nails, I'll just put them on my toes. Because the toes are I'm fine with because I can still run around and do stuff. I have to be a little bit careful but it's a lot easier for me to do my toes than my, my fingers, so, on my fingernails. So, but if you, if you don't want to get your nails done, you can't afford to get your nails done, but you want your nails to last longer, get these two products from Isla. They are, Isla Cosmetics is a little expensive. I think all their polishes are like 18 bucks, but these are going to last you a really, really long time. So I would recommend getting these. And you know, if you're fine doing these <laughs> to your nail polish, this is your best option. This is my best option. Still don't like it. I still rather get my nails done and have someone else do it for me. But because uh, that to me lasts the longest whenever you get nails done um, with either the gel or the acrylics. Those last so long. Acrylics will last the longest. Gel second best. Then this is your third best option. Then in the video I talked about the Tila Curl Boost Anti Frizz Serum Curl of Your Dreams. I'm almost out of this. There's only a little bit left, so I've gone through a good amount, and I love this for whenever I want my hair to wave. You know, whenever my hair gets kind of damp, I put this in my hair, and it helps wave it. Um, so I've really been liking this. But for me, it just doesn't. It doesn't have to be this product. I realize that as long as I put some sort of spray, sea salt spray, hair spray, some sort of gel in it, no matter what, I just need a little extra help. But it doesn't necessarily have to be this. So I'm just going to be using this up. And then I'll probably just try out some stuff from Pacifica just because I love Pacifica. I, they are 100% vegan and cruelty free. I don't even know if Tila Organics is on Logical Harmony's radar. But I kind of want to stick with brands that Logical Harmony has checked out because I really trust Tashina Combs. So I kind of want to just use this up and then, you know, just buy more from Pacifica. And especially because I really love Pacifica, you'll be seeing Pacifica products, hair products in my 2017 favorites. So I really want to try more from them for sure. So I'm going to use this up, but I'm not going to repurchase it. All right, and the last thing that I talked about in my 2016 favorites was a fashion item, which was just Forever 21 in general. And you guys know that that will be making my 2017 favorites too because at the end of 2016, I started working at Forever 21 and that's after already being obsessed with Forever 21. Then I started working there. So then basically everything that I bought that I was wearing was all from Forever 21. So I have so much stuff from Forever 21. I wish I got more accessories though. I feel like that's where I lacked. I got so many tops, but like I want more accessories. But Forever 21 has such great fashion products. Most of their stuff is vegan friendly, so you do have to check the tags, but most of it is vegan friendly. So um, I really love that, and their stuff is more affordable. There is some stuff there that's a little bit more pricey, but you guys, like, I mean, the shirt I'm wearing is from Forever 21, and this is from Forever 21. These are from Forever 21. This is from Forever 21. Like, I, and I didn't even plan that. Like, I just put on what I wore last year. But um, a ton of my stuff is from Forever 21. So, uh, and you guys will be seeing that. You've probably already seen that on my fashion videos, upcoming fashion videos that I'm going to be reposting and then talking about in the future. Most of my, my, my fashion collection, especially what's hanging in my closet, is Forever 21. So, um, I really recommend checking out that store. I think it's great for, it provides more affordable products. And the really... The thing I've always loved about Forever 21 and why I wanted to work for them is that they really keep up with the trends. So, you know, you're always, you're going to be on style. You're going to see what's popular and, you know, you have so many options and it's just a really fun store. So I'd re really recommend checking Forever 21 out. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will link down my below my 2016 favorites, just in case you guys want to refer to that, maybe watch that and see, you know, what I said then versus what I've said now. But that is where the products are in my life. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I don't know if I already said that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button below. Click that little bell so that you're notified of when my videos have been posted. Like this video if you did like it, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye! Hey, beauty addicts. So we are going to be doing this cool toned makeup tutorial, and you guys have actually already seen this look from my makeup and brushes of the day video, and this is just the full makeup tutorial in case you guys want to learn how to create this look, which I am super excited about. I don't often do cool, cool toned looks, but I love this one. So the first thing that we are going to do is go in with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Setting Spray and spray that all over.